हाय वेलकम टू वन मोर वीडियो ऑन माय यूट्यूब चैनल मोरलीस वर्ल्ड ऑफ फिजिक्स एस आई हैव मेंशन इन माय इंट्रोडक्टरी वीडियो फिजिक्स गवर्न्स ऑलमोस्ट ऑल दी एक्टिविटीज दैट वी परफॉर्म एस पार्ट ऑफ आवर डे टू डे लाइफ आल्सो द थिंग्स दैट वी सी एंड यूज uh in and around us here on the earth as well as else in the universe also are um governed by the physical laws and principles before actually coming to the topic of discussion for today's video uh, let me quote some common experiences and observations um which we make in our day to day life uh, which has some physical aspect in common among them it is very common in hindu homes to light the traditional lamp every day in the early mornings and in the evenings as well as on special auspicious occasions this lamp usually contains a reservoir in which the lamp oil is taken and one or more cotton wicks are immersed into this oil with their ends protruding above the oil level at the edges of the lamp so it is this tip of these wicks uh, which are lighted and burned using the oil from the reservoir in the case of a candle also a similar behavior is observed the candle has a central wick running throughout its length and when the top tip of this wick is lighted uh, the wax on the top of the candle melts and forms a pool of liquid wax uh, in a sort of reservoir like dip at the top and uh, the top tip of the wick protrudes at the center out of the liquid wax and uh, when the wick burns the wax is vaporized and it is this vapor which burns at the tip of the wick this is a small plant called mashitanda in malayalam language and the scientific name is peperomia pellucida plant as a child when i was studying in the primary school i remember having used the stem of this plant to erase the writing on the slate in this context we also used to perform a small experiment with this plant some colored water solution was taken inside a glass tumbler and the plant was dipped inside the solution such that the roots are completely immersed and a major part of the stem is outside the solution it is kept in this way for about 2 to 3 days after which it is taken out it is then washed in water and when you look at it you can see that along the axis of the stem of the plant there is a colored portion which shows clearly that the solution has been taken up by the plant via the roots even some of the leaves have been discolored It is a very common practice to all people who use fountain pens to write on paper uh, to make use of a blotting paper to remove the excess ink if at all um, from the written pages after taking bath we use a towel in order to remove the water from our body now the water is absorbed 
into the fabric of the towel the fountain pen nib is the actual part of a pen that makes contact with the paper while writing it is a tapered piece of metal through which the fountain pen ink flows into the paper during the summer season we wear mainly cotton clothes this is uh, to absorb the sweat produced because of the heat all the above examples have one common feature uh, which is the physical phenomenon of what is known as capillarity capillarity or capillary rise is a phenomenon in which liquid spontaneously rise or fall in a narrow space such as a thin tube or in the voids of a porous material to illustrate this uh, let us carry out a simple experiment we take colored water in a beaker and we have a very narrow glass tube now we gradually dip this glass tube into the colored water okay we are just dipping into the surface of the liquid in the beaker a uh, wow just look at the colored water rising in the tube uh it will rise to a certain level and then it will remain at that level even if we uh dip the tube deeper into the water the water level will remain the same now if i replace this glass tube with a narrower one you see that the height to which the water rises will be larger on the other hand if i use a tube of wider bore then the height to which the water level rises will be smaller than the previous two cases i am sure that many of you might have made a similar observation while taking uh, or drinking juice from a glass tumbler using a straw after discussing the capillarity effect let us uh, revisit the our mashitand experiment which we performed earlier where we had kept uh, the plant inside colored water for 2 to 3 days and then taken out and so that the ink had uh, been sucked up the stem of the plant and uh, it has reached the leaves also now the stem of the plant has a vascular tissue which acts very much like a capillary tube and conducts water and dissolved nutrients upwards from the root via the process of capillarity so that is how plants take water and nutrients from the soil the burning of a lamp or candle wick uh, is easily explained in terms of the capillary action a lamp wick contains numerous capillary tubes of very small diameters the oil or the melted wax which is the fuel uh, from the reservoir rises up these capillaries and <clears throat> reach the tip of the wick where it evaporates as a result of the heat and combines with the oxygen and burns the rate of burning of the wick material itself is quite small hence it is essentially the fuel which burns constantly consider the formation of air bubbles in two cases one is soap bubbles and the other is that of air bubbles inside boiling water in both these cases the bubbles are spherical in shape 
in all the above examples that we have considered there is a common physical process known as surface tension this process is very much related to the forces of attraction between molecules that means the intermolecular forces of attraction uh, there are actually two types of intermolecular forces consider the case of a liquid taken in a glass vessel if you consider a molecule deep inside the liquid then each molecule will be attracted towards all other sides by the other molecules in the liquid uh hence we have a case of balanced forces on this particular molecule so there is no preferential force in any direction but when we consider the liquids on the surface of the um, liquid you can see that there are no molecules on the upper side uh, to attract the molecules hence there are unbalanced forces so effectively there is a downward pull on each molecule on the surface now the surface of the molecule is usually known as the liquid meniscus now these forces of attraction between molecules of the same kind are called cohesive forces in contrast to the cohesive forces um, there are what are called adhesive forces which are those forces which operate between molecules of different types for example in the case considered uh, that if a liquid taken in a um, vessel the cohesive forces act between molecules of the liquid now once we come to the interface between the liquid and the surface of the container then there are also forces of attraction between molecules of the liquid and the molecules of the solid now these are called the adhesive forces so therefore these adhesive forces are between molecules of the liquid inside a vessel and those of the container surface in contact with the liquid now the forces between atoms and molecules underlie the macroscopic effect called the surface tension these attractive forces pull the molecules closer together and therefore there is a tendency to minimize the surface area in fact a liquid surface acts like a stretched elastic membrane that is energy is required to take a molecule from inside a liquid to the surface therefore the molecules at the surface have effectively more energy than those molecules which are inside the liquid now this extra energy is what makes the liquid surface behave like a stretched membrane it is really the general tendency of any physical system to attain the lowest energy status that means to minimize the total energy of the system uh, which results in the tendency to minimize the surface area now it's well known that the geometrical shape that has the smallest surface area for a given volume is the sphere now smallest area also represents least total energy for the surface molecules therefore a liquid drop will assume a spherical shape thereby attaining a stable minimum energy configuration this is the explanation of the observed fact that soap bubbles and air bubbles inside a boiling liquid or spherical in shape many times most of us might have noticed the formation of thin soap films on a wire frame or something like that uh, this soap film acts like a stretched membrane which will always try to minimize the surface area so that the total energy is a minimum here we will perform a simple experiment to illustrate the properties of such a thin soap film uh, i am putting 
a small cotton loop onto the thin soft film. I will now pierce this film inside the loop. See that the loop immediately assumes a circular shape. We know that the circle has the minimum area for a given perimeter. Hence, the remaining part of the film outside the loop will have the minimum area representing minimum surface energy. And that is the tendency of surface tension. Now coming to the stretched soft film on a wire loop with the small cotton loop on it. When the film inside the small loop is pierced, the tendency of the remaining soft film to assume minimum area results in the portion inside the cotton loop to assume maximum area for a given perimeter and that is a circle. Hence the cotton loop will assume a circular shape, an effect which we have already observed. So this is before piercing the small loop and once we pierce the thin film inside the loop, uh, immediately it assumes the shape of a circle. So that therefore uh, the area of the film outside this loop will be minimized and the film will have the minimum energy. You can see that here actually um, since it is a circular shape the cotton thread will be acted upon at each point by the same force. So therefore there is a balanced force when this shape is circular. So each point on the loop is affected upon by equal adhesive forces with the liquid molecules of the soft film. This force will be directed normal to the loop at each point. So therefore the loop will be drawn into the shape of a circle. There are many other examples for uh, the fact that the liquid surface will attain a minimum surface area. Raindrops are spherical in shape since a sphere has the smallest surface area for a given volume. Uh, one can perform a small experiment where a needle uh, can be very carefully placed on the surface of water flat. Um, so here even though the needle is several times denser than water, it is the surface tensile and effects uh, which result in the needle being floated on the surface of the water. Also the action of soaps and detergents, these actually help the cleaning of clothes by lowering the surface tension of the water so that it more readily soaks into pores and soiled areas so that the dirt can be removed easily. Now we come to the actual definition of surface tension. This quantity is uh, alternatively represented by these symbols capital S, capital T or sigma. It can be defined in two different uh, ways. It is a measure of the surface energy obviously. So if we take surface energy per unit area of the surface, uh, that is one definition of the surface tension. So in this case the unit is joules per meter squared. It can also be defined as the force acting per unit length of an imaginary line on the liquid surface. So considered this way the unit will be newtons per meter. One can actually see that these two definitions and units are equivalent. Since we identify joules as newtons meter. So therefore there is a relation between these two which in fact these are identical units. These are some quantitative uh, measures of the surface tension values for some common liquids. Uh, for water it is about 0 0.072 newtons per meter, kerosene 0 0.023, mercury has higher value for the surface tension that is uh, 0 
paraffin 0.035, coconut oil 0.033, acetone 0.067 newtons per meter. So therefore obviously uh, these values are different for different liquids. Now let us see the effects of external agencies on surface tension. First we consider the effect of temperature. It is found that the surface tension decreases with temperature, essentially becoming zero at the boiling point. This is because at this temperature the interface between the liquid and the vapor essentially uh, disappears. So as the temperature increases the surface tension steadily decreases and at the boiling point it is zero. Now another observed effect is um, the addition of impurities into a liquid. Now this will have the effect of altering the surface tension. For example, the surface tension of water increases if we add salt to it, whereas on the other hand it decreases when we add soap or detergents. Now it is a common observation that water mainly wets most of the surfaces that we commonly hand in our day to day life. Now this wetting is a process very much related to surface tension. What is it? Some liquids stick on to some surfaces and they refuse to drain away completely from the surface. A very common example is water sticking to most of the surfaces that we use in our daily lives. This is a plate on which water has been taken and uh, I tried to drain the water completely but look at this. There are still drops of water, bigger drops of water sticking onto the surface of the plate. Now wetting is nothing but the ability of a liquid to maintain contact with a solid surface resulting from intermolecular interactions when the two are brought together. So it is essentially the end effect of the surface tensional forces. If you observe closely the water sticking to the steel plate for example, you can see that uh, the top surface of the drops has a convex shape. That means the angle between the tangent to the top surface of the liquid and the solid surface will be less than 90 degrees. Now it is this angle which is known as the contact angle. The magnitude of the contact angle will depend on an interplay between the cohesive and adhesive forces. It will also depend on the presence of impurities in the on the solid surface. Uh, see these are different cases of the relative magnitude of theta with respect to 90 degree for example. Now if theta is very close to zero that means the liquid will spread all over the surface. Now theta greater than 90 is this case. So the liquid will wet to the surface in a uh, nice fashion. Theta very close to 90 we have what is called incomplete wetting. Theta greater than 90 and near to 90 that is also incomplete or partial wetting and theta close to 180 degree there will be no wetting of the surface. Mercury is a well known common liquid which does not wet usual surfaces. Its contact angle is about 140 degrees with for example so, uh, soda lime glass. Now small droplets of mercury will combine into a larger sphere shape which will roll on a flat surface. For example if a drop of uh, what uh, mercury is kept on the floor and then just we just gently push it, it will roll and move on the surface. Now if it is dropped from 
a particular height then it will break into smaller spherical droplets or maybe if the drop is subjected to pressure. Materials with a special affinity for water that means those it spreads across minimizing contact are known as hydrophilic. Most common surfaces are in fact hydrophilic. In contrast those that naturally repel water causing droplets to form are known as hydrophobic. A very good example is the leaves of lotus which strongly resists wetting and leads to the formation of water droplets rolling along its surfaces. Now let us welcome the entry of mathematical principles into the discussion of our surface tension. Uh, we will see two instances of this and try to understand how we can use the corresponding mathematical formulae to determine the value of surface tension experimentally. First take the case of the capillary rise. The rise in the liquid level in the capillary is H and uh, the radius of the capillary tube is R. The weight of the liquid column in the tube is balanced by the vertical component of the forces due to surface tension. So here we have a blown up um, image of the experiment. So we have the meniscus which is uh, concave for some liquids and uh, when there is a rise in the liquid level and it will be convex for some other liquids where there is a dip or fall in the level of the liquid inside the tube. So this theta is the corresponding contact angle and uh, we represent by S the value of the surface tension force. So therefore uh, from the fact that the weight of this liquid column within the tube that means above the level of the liquid outside um, the tube is balanced by the vertical component of this force. So that means S cos theta. Now this S cos theta is acting at each point along the circumference of the meniscus uh, of the liquid within the tube. So therefore we have 2 pi r which is the total length of the meniscus edge times S cos theta. So this is the force per unit length. So that should be equal to pi r square that is the area of the uh, cross section of the tube times the density of the liquid into G into H. So therefore we can write S is equal to R rho G H by 2 cos theta. Now let us consider uh, the liquid bubbles. So we have a liquid bubble here which is spherical um, and we take a cut, imaginary cut along the central uh, plane. So we have um, half, one half hemisphere of the liquid drop on one side and the other hemisphere of the liquid drop on the other side. So if you consider this particular section, uh, this will be under equilibrium um, due to the interplay of two balanced forces which is the excess pressure inside the liquid bubble which is acting like this on the hemispherical section and the surface tensional forces which act at every point along the circumference of this section, circular section. So these two forces will be balanced under equilibrium conditions. So the surface tension acting around the circumference is S into pi d and the pressure force exerted on the area of this circle is P into pi d square by 4 where d is the diameter of this uh, circular section. 
under the equilibrium conditions these forces are equal and opposite so we have p into pi d square by 4 is equal to s into pi d or one can write this particular expression for the excess pressure inside the liquid bubble so p is equal to 4 s by d or it will be 2 s by r where r is the radius of the capillary tube so here we have the case of a bubble with only a single outside surface now if you consider two surfaces uh, on the uh, outside one surface on the outside and the other on the inside uh, just as in the case of a soft bubble of course the expression will change to p is equal to 8 s by d the above two mathematical derivations involving the surface tension can be effectively used to measure the value of the surface tension experimentally the experimental procedure involves the simple measurement of either the capillary rise that means the height above the uh, common liquid level uh, within the tube or in the case of the bubbles the excess pressure inside the liquid bubble i will end this video here this is Professor Murali Tharavarya signing off from Murali's World of Physics. I will be back with yet another video on one more facet of physics. Till then, goodbye.